All right, I heard you want to be able to run Xerox and Docker without Caddy TLS and with it. So this is going to be a quick run through showing it without first, and then we'll add it in in case you want that easy button for a managed wildcard certificate through Caddy. All right, the first step, we're going to be following the instructions here. And this is the self-hosting area of the docs. You can find it right here under guides, self-hosting. And we'll start at the top. We'll just skip over the extra stuff for Caddy. All you need as far as DNS configuration to get this working without TLS is a wildcard record. So that needs to go, that needs to point to the public IP of your Linux VPS where you're running Docker. All right, with that, we need a copy of the Docker Compose project files. There's a one liner there that'll download it for you, or you can do it yourself. Just get the zip file and unpack this part of the zip file into an otherwise empty directory. Now we're going to need to create one file that's not included in that zip file and that's named .env. And this is basically a configuration file. It just has key equals value pairs here. And I'll put that example on my clipboard and create that file. This is like filling out a form. So we need to make sure that Xerox DNS zone equals the real domain name that we are going to dedicate to Xerox. This is the DNS zone where the wildcard record is created, was created, that resolves to your Linux VPS public IP. Now we need an email address. That'll be our login username. And the rest of it, you could, uh, you, you definitely want to set long unpredictable values for these because you don't want them to be guessable. Uh, since your Xerox instance is going to be public on the internet, those are important secrets. But that's all you need uh, for this minimal Xerox setup. We're going to skip over the extra stuff that we're going to use for Caddy in the next part. And we can go ahead and run the up command for Docker Compose with the build flag. And that's because some of these files, like this uh, Docker file, are used to build the images on the fly. And as soon as that's done, we can do the next step, which is set up our user account. This is a first user account. It's not an admin account. We're just going to use the Xerox admin create account command to create our first user. And you can make as many as you want in the same way. If you scroll down here, you see an example of running that Xerox command inside the controller container with a different email and password for each user. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll put that on my clipboard and paste it as is. That's gonna use the environment variables that we just set up in the env file to make our first user. Um, so there are three pieces of information here. There's the login username, which is an email address, and Xerox user PW is our password. So I'll make sure the console is now up and running. Now our Docker project is pu publishing this port 18080 uh, to the local host so that we can hit it directly. I probably typed that wrong. Xerox user PW. There we go. Don't need to save that. So this is this bright green element here on the graph is our account. And as we enable environments, we'll see those dangling off of the account. So each account has zero or more environments and then environments can have shares. So let's look at the next step. We need to configure our local environment to use the API that we just created. So uh, there are two options here with TLS and without. I'll do it first without TLS. I just need to edit this so that it reflects the correct DNS zone. And now we can run the enable command with the token that we received when we created the account. Now, if we look in our console, we have that first account that just got created right there. And if we wanted to give it uh, something more notice, uh, something more memorable,
So that's going to be whatever you type for the description. And now that we have our first environment, we can give it a share. So whenever you create a public share like this, you get the public front end URL as the share URL. And we can visit that in our web browser and see that same docs preview that we were accessing over here on 127.001 port 3000. So that's what that looks like. And here inside the console, we see that the account here has an environment here and that environment has one share so far. And when I control C cancel, it disappears. That's gone forever. Okay, I think we're in business there. Now for part two, we're going to enable TLS on the same instance that we have here. This would be the URL for accessing it with TLS. There's nothing there right now because we haven't turned on Caddy, but Caddy's gonna publish ports 80 and 443 for us. 80 is just there to redirect to 443, but that means everything for ZRock is gonna run through our uh, TLS enabled reverse proxy. So back up to the top, this adds a couple more things you need. And it's shown here as additional configuration for Caddy. We need to use a DNS provider that's supported by Caddy. This link right here shows you all the different plugins that are available. It's things like Route 53, Azure, and Cloudflare, which I'll use Cloudflare. So because that's where I have my wildcard record already created. Now in my Cloudflare account, I obtained an API token by clicking on the settings. And that is another value that I've defined in my ENV file. And you'll see that in the example down here. So we're gonna use the same project. We just need to add more environment variables. So this is where I would put my Cloudflare API token. And we're going to need DNS plugin value as well. So I'll go back to my ENV file and add that. All right, so I've added the DNS plugin Cloudflare and I've already got the API token defined in my environment. So now we just have to do one more thing. If you remember, we have these files here in our project, and this is the optional file for Caddy. We need to rename this file. So I'll just remove the Caddy prefix from that file, and this is what it looks like now. So we can run our up command with the build flag one more time. Docker compose up dash dash build. Now we have a caddy container. All right, so that now that that's up and running, let's take another look at the ports that we are publishing. Now you can see we have two more ports, 80 and 443. And these ports over here for the Xerox controller and front end are only published to 127.001. You can change that by modifying the compose file, but that's to protect you because you probably don't want those exposed to the internet without TLS. And now that Caddy is up and running and Caddy is terminating TLS for us, then those are published to the web. Let's take a look at the logs for Caddy. Here's one way to do it. You can say docker compose logs, give it the name of the container and tell it you want to follow. So we can see here the message from Caddy is certificate obtained successfully for this wildcard zone. So we're in business. Now if we go over here to the other tab that I had open for the Xerox console, I'll just reload that. Now we have a good certificate for Xerox and everything else that uh, Xerox is doing is all using this wildcard certificate. We can actually look at that right here in the web browser, star.rzone. That's what the certificate is. And then Caddy's going to keep solving that DNS challenge for us as long as that API token we gave it is valid. Now we can log in here with that same username and password. And we'll see the same stuff. When, while we're following the instructions, we need to change the API endpoint here for our to in order to re-enable it with TLS. All right, so we can paste that command. And just like before, we'll edit this 
to reflect the real DNS zone that we're using with ZROC. And now we can run that same enable command even with the same uh, token. So now we have a new environment that's only using TLS. Everything will, will work normally now. We can say share public like we did before. Now we see that the URL is HTTPS and is using 443 and it works the same way. But it, you get a valid certificate this time whenever you visit the URL. Everything looks good. Connection is secure. All right, so pop into the discourse forum. Let us know if this is or isn't working for you or what you want it to do differently. I hope it's helpful. Uh, definitely feel free to ask questions though and have fun with it. Bye now.